Thank you. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. I was looking at the agenda and I was trying to understand why I'm first in the agenda and the reason is that I know the least about the topic. Uh, this is an area that I haven't really done a substantial amount of work, but Mohammed's invitation uh, actually motivated me to think about what someone with a quantitative background can do in this area, and I'm here to essentially learn what may be uh, useful to contribute. So, so this leads us to a quantitative research agenda for forced displacement, and as we do in science before we start thinking about solutions to a problem, it's important to understand what is the scope of the problem and through that to understand some of the important challenges. So some of these numbers appeared in uh, the slides that uh, Mohammed uh, showed and Gary. Uh, so there is clearly a, a substantial increase in the number of uh, people that have been displaced uh, through 2009 to 2000. 18, we had uh, uh, a significant increase. The number of forcibly displaced have increased from 43 million to 71 million. Just in 2018 alone, there were about 13.6 million uh, displaced individuals, 26 per minute. Uh, and uh, the problem is actually quite concentrated. So about two thirds of the world refugees are coming from five countries that are listed here. Uh, and uh, they also go to a very relatively small number of countries if you think about all of the countries on earth. So the uh, top five countries in terms of the number of refugees that they host are listed on the slide. And it's also important to think about the countries that are hosting the largest number of refugees as a percentage of their population, because this gives you a sense of the impact that uh, refugees have on a specific country. Another uh, actually quite frightening statistic is that about half of the refugee population in 2018 were actually children. So this brings us to some challenges uh, that are, I think, highlighted by the statistics. There is clearly an accumulation. Uh, people are displaced and they are moving to certain countries, and very few return to their country of origin. So in 2018, only 4.4% returned to their country of origin. There are inequities in terms of the countries of origin in terms of the countries that are hosting these populations. And as Mohammed pointed out, most of the refugees end up in uh, relatively underdeveloped economies. So that creates an additional challenge. It's uh, an area where there's a paucity of data and therefore it's hard to make predictions and plan. And there are clearly challenges in terms of logistics, in terms of health and in terms of education. I will just mention that uh, you know, if this was not motivating enough, I have a personal motivation to look at this problem. My family uh, has a history of migration. So 1922, my uh, father's family moved from uh, Turkey to Greece, and that was a forced migration. And then I voluntarily moved to the US in 1991. Uh, so to think about areas for quantitative work, so science helps us understand, engineering is more about doing, where uh, I think some of the problems lie, predictive models. So if we had uh, data and one could predict arrivals uh, as a function of weather, as a function of events, as a function of number of people in upstream locations, that would be extremely important because it will help plan uh, and it will help uh, with provisioning resources in order to handle the inflow of refugees. Logistics, so clearly uh, supply chain management issues, issues of inventory control, food provisioning, even scheduling of workers that are working in these refugee camps. And uh, finally, management, queue management, minimize, the delay, the uh, improve the distribution of goods and food in uh, in some of these uh, of these camps, search and rescue. Uh, clearly, there are people that are crossing through uh, mountainous terrain. If you think about the border between Greece and Turkey, 
Uh, they are crossing in uh, boats uh, under really bad weather conditions. So having an ability to autonomously, using autonomous vehicles to facilitate search and rescue missions would be extremely important. And finally, resource allocation and planning within host countries. So for instance, issues like facility location, where do you place some of the refugee camps that are hosting a large number of individuals, but also in terms of allocating resources and providing potentially incentives to some of the host communities for agreeing to host refugees among their midst. So uh, thank you, and I'm looking forward to uh, learn from others.